and welcome to Her Business, where we interview inspiring businesswomen and entrepreneurs. I'm Susie Daphnis of the Australian Business Women's Network. My guest today is Louise Woodbury, co-author of a new book, The Invisible Partnership, How to Work with Your Spouse Without Getting Divorced. In this interview, we take a look at, is it really possible for relationship partners to run a business together? And when your partner's in life and business, who gets to be boss? We also look at the role that commitment, alignment and integrity play in creating a successful partnership and maintaining a healthy relationship. Enjoy this interview with Louise Woodbury. Louise, hi and welcome to Her Business. Thanks, Susie. Great to to be here with you. Now, you've just co-authored a new book titled The Invisible Partnership, How to Work with Your Spouse Without Getting Divorced. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Tell us how the book came about. Over the last few years, we've certainly noticed an increased number of couples who are working together coming to us for consulting. And William and I have been uh, married and in business for the past 16 years. And what we've been able to really see is that the issues that William and I were dealing with, you know, 10, 15 years ago, is what's being presented to to us with our clients. And, um, you know, the unfortunate thing is that for people in, you know, couples working together in business, there's no specific book that relates to them um, as far as being couples in in business. There's lots of books that, you know, take care of the the business aspects of running, you know, a small business. And obviously there's a, a, you know, an enormous shelf space of personal development and even relationships. However, no specific book has ever been available that really combines the the two together. Um, what we also really know is that financially and emotionally, divorce and business failure is certainly not something that people want to go through. So having had the experience and the success of being together and, and knowing that, you know, the information that we've put in this book has certainly saved our marriage and business, it was just really time to, I guess, take the mystery out of it for a lot of uh, people who are in business together and, and you know, maybe a startup, but we've got some uh, clients that have been together for 15 years but are still ready to to take it to the next level. And we know that a large percentage of um, businesses, small businesses, 80% I think the number is, are run by two people that are in a relationship. Now, are you and William the exception or can life partners successfully run a business together? Well, you know, our, our response to is it really possible for life partners to run a business, we go absolutely it is because we're living proof of it and we're still doing it. I mean, it's not like we uh, we did at one point in the, in the past and we're no longer doing it. We've got all the theory. I mean, every day we're still, you know, working towards the ongoing success of our partnership. So what we really know that couples do need to be able to be successful is the basic foundations in place. And for a lot of uh, our clients, we, we use the analogy of driving a car. Most of us sit in the back seat or the, the front passenger seat for 16 years and nine months, let's say, and then there's an assumption that we know how to drive a car. It's not until you get in the driver's seat that you realise that there's a totally different perspective. Now, the same applies to marriage and business. You know, you may have seen successful marriages and you may have seen successful, you know, businesses, but put those two together, um, you know, it's not until you're actually in the driver's seat of being married Married and running a business that you start to really see what you know what it really takes and uh, you've got to dig deep most days to uh, to value and respect each other but you know categor- categorically it is absolutely possible let's say that it is possible let's talk about how we make that possible now one of the things you say is that the rules for marriage or an intimate relationship don't work when it comes for business what do you mean by that Right. With our clients, what we first of all do is is separate uh, and, and get them back into understanding that they they are a married uh, unit. Uh, meaning, it, you know, it could be it, it's obviously two people, whether they're whether they're married, de facto, it doesn't really matter. I mean, in the context of our book, we're just looking at life partners being together in life and then they run a business. Now, the rules of how they've created their personal relationship are 
ultimately driven by a very intimate, sometimes you know, obviously a sexual um, aspect to their relationship, and it's a very emotional, um, you know, foundation when you are, you know, together with somebody in your life. Now, in business, whilst you can be very passionate together. Uh, you know, we've got some work ethics that could be quite different to who we are in a social setting. So marriage is the, uh, the is a social union. It's a legal contract, obviously, between two people. But there is a whole lot of emotional um, aspects to it. Business is, you know, very, very much logical. And in business, you definitely need to have your eyes wide open. So what we find in uh, in our you know consulting work, and this is what William and I needed to confront, is the agreements that we had in our in our life partnership didn't always match up with how we operated in business between the hours of eight a.m. till six p.m. for instance, and this is where some of the conflict. Uh, you know, kind of starts to show up. Another way to to really understand this is that. You know, you might be an expert basketball player, but uh, you may not be very good at golf. And even though they, you know, they use a ball, um, so effectively, people have got to be very clear about who they are in their life partnership versus who they really choose to be when they're in business. Let's talk about power struggles. If there's two of you and you have an equal partnership, say in relationship and you assume you'll have an equal partnership in business, who gets to be boss? You know, this is another great aspect. And in the beginning, um, you know, the early stages of William and I working together is that, you know, what we now know is that we were two solo, you know, entrepreneurs that came together and found ourselves in business together. Now, what we needed to really look at is that as individuals in our in our respective businesses, per se. You know, we got to run our own race and we got to make decisions instinctively. When we came together and joined, uh, you know, bottom line is I joined William's business. Um, We needed to really understand how two very strong-willed, strong-minded people could actually function together without the compromise. Now, in the first three years of our working relationship, we're very clear with our clients and, you know, in the, in this book is that we're very clear to say that we didn't get it right and there was very much uh, competitive energy. We were... Uh, bumping up against each other and, you know, there was major conflict not only for us but the people that we employed. So I think what I'd like to also do, Susie, is separate leadership from management as well because what we're, what we're talking about in the Invisible Partnership is that two people can come together under what we call the fluid leadership. Now, this is a very uh, hidden uh, way of operating for for couples in business. It's something that oscillates between the partners at the speed of light, and most people don't even know that it's going on nor understand it. Now, as far as having a leader of the business, you can have the couple be the leadership, but one of them is is more than likely to be the best manager of the day to day. So, as far as the team is concerned, they would report to the manager. But understand that it is a dual directorship, it is a dual decision-making process that really is going on in, in that small business. So, you know, it's it's not as clear-cut as the, uh, you know, business books would have us believe. Um, and, you know, let's face it, a lot of corporate analogy is brought into small business that just simply doesn't work. So in our book, we talk about the silverback male gorilla and the queen bee, which is obviously William and I. And... Uh, certainly how we um, have had to learn to really value each other and uh, and appreciate that we do equally contribute to the success of this business. In um, a business where there are two partners, and I understand the distinction between who manages day to day, is it clear enough for staff? Because I, I know having been in business with my partner that um, sometimes staff aren't sure who gets the final say or who the leader is. How do you manage leadership in relation to staff? Is it a ma- matter of, well, I management? Look, I, it's a great question, Susie, because um, most uh, most couples in business are fairly naive, 
you know, they're making it up on the run, I think is the best way to describe it. And it's not until there's a, you know, a major conflict or a major crisis or, you know, the business might be expanding so rapidly that things are out of control that you start to, you know, the dynamic starts to change. Now, it's when I say it's naively, um, you know, in place is that uh, when you employ, you know, when, when you're a small business uh, owner and you, you're working with your life partner and you employ your first person, you know, I mean, let's face it, some people might employ their first person in their home office. Um, so, of course, what you're doing is that you're actually bringing that person into your family and that they may you know, almost relate to you and your partner as the mother and father. Now, when the business starts to expand and you've got, you know, 10 people or 20 people, you know, it's a little tricky to operate like the family unit, um, you know, unless it becomes, you know, like most families, which is quite dysfunctional. Um, and then you've got to deal with that. But it's it's the owners understanding the roles that they play and then communicating clearly when they're employing the people. Otherwise, what happens, which certainly happened to us, was that the, the team start to operate um, like the mother and father aspect. So what I mean by that is William would always give them a yes and I would always give them a no. So they learnt to play that game from the point of view when they just wanted something, a quick decision. Of course, they'd go to William because he he wouldn't ask any tough questions. He'd just say, yeah, no problem, go for it. But, but that then started to get in the way of um, not only my relationship with the team but also my relationship with William because... I just kind of felt that he was undermining my authority and leadership and 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 that's really what this um, this book is about as well is just really understanding the roles and the decisions that you make when you run a business and how they do influence and affect the people that you employ. Very good. Let's talk about some of the big concepts. I, I, I call them big concepts because I think that getting them right is part of and implementing them is part of the foundation of making this work and the first of those is the subject of alignment and while I think conceptually um, those listening will understand what alignment is let's talk about the concept of alignment as it relates to working with your spouse It is a big subject and uh, I don't think that, you know, you can, I can certainly just kind of give you a couple of key tips. The, you know, what I would really ask the, uh, you know, that your, your community within the ABN to really consider is that where, first of all, the, the clues for this is to really look at where you are not aligned with your partner. This will be where you're, you've got conflict or you, I mean, what I call it is the elephant in the living room. So effectively, as the business owner, if you know that there are some subjects that you're unwilling to speak to your partner about, whether it be, it could be financial areas, it may be, you know, how to... Uh, get your sales and marketing and, you know, expand the business, things like that. So the alignment is really looking at what is important to each person. So what I'd really recommend um, as a, you know, just a a real offering here is that, um, you know, get a piece of paper and write down 12 key things that are important to you. Get your partner to do the same. And don't do it as, um, as you know, don't do it as a brainstorming session together. Do it as individuals and then start to really compare. What I do with my clients is ultimately, you know, rank them with them and, and get, uh, just get to see what is really important. But, but alignment for me is really about uh, being in the same space. You know, when, when you have to make the big decisions, you don't want to be in conflict with your partner about it. And, And, you know, to be in alignment is really knowing that you're both operating towards the achievement of your common goal. One of the examples, and it may not have been specifically under alignment that I recall uh, from the book, is, you know, where you want the business to go. What, when is business time, when is personal time? Having alignment and agreements about when we talk about business and and what we don't. Give give us an example, if that's not a correct one, of where lack of alignment shows up. Look, I think the the first kind of um, thing that pops into my mind is I see too many business owners that actually don't have their end point in, in, you know, for their business in the first place. So, 
um, a, again, for most people starting a business, uh, it's it's not like, right, we're going to do this for two years. This is what it's going to look like. This is how it's going to be, you know, begin with the end in mind if we want to use that analogy. Most people are frustrated with their current situation and they think, right, let's go and, you know, it's what Gerber talks about in the e-myth and the entrepreneurial seizure. Now, what one of the key tips that we really recommend is that if a couple is to work successfully in the business, they've both got to be very passionate about what they're focused on. Too often I see a spouse being, let's say, dragged and they come in kicking and screaming into a business because the business is um, either expanding too rapidly, it's out of control. And if I you know, put it into gender terms, let's say that uh, – you know, the, the male has, uh, you know, opened the business, um, it's expanding rapidly and then they bring the wife in to mop it all up, maybe to, you know, create structures and order. And, you know, I'm talking about my own relationship with William is that, you know, William is very big picture and I'm very detailed and very organised and, you know, I, I am the person who structures it and grounds it. Now, in the beginning stages, the wife coming in, in this example, the wife coming in to support the husband, she may really only think that she's coming in short term, but then five years later wakes up and goes, you know, how do, how, why am I still here? Like, how did I get here? And so really, you, you know, they've got to look at the long-term aspect of are they truly being business owners for life or until they get to a certain point? But unfortunately, that certain point is never defined. Equally, if they don't know where they're going in their life, meaning their marriage or their, you know, their personal goals, effectively, they can't work effectively, can they? I mean, it, it's, um, you know, when, when the first pressure hits, um, if they don't know why the goals are important to them or what it looks like if it was done, well, then they're just on a treadmill. And, and personally, the treadmill um, way of operating just doesn't cut it. I'd like to change uh, tack very quickly and look at some of the elements of a successful partnership and give the listeners some tips that they can go away with. Then I want to come back and ask you some really serious questions. <laughs> <laughs> Seri more serious than the More last. serious than the last one. <laughs> so what are some of the elements of a successful partnership that okay, we can so let the listener I know about? Great. Yeah, great, Susie. I've, um, I think I've mentioned one of them because it was, you know, really on the tip of my tongue there is that um, find the business that you're both passionate about. There is nothing worse than um, seeing when I'm consulting and I see uh, one person be, be just so engaged and passionate about, let's say, an industry or, you know, the type of business that they have and the other person is just going through the motions it is extremely um, damaging to the relationship. Um, it is um, undermining, but also what I know to be true is that the business will never, ever be as successful. It never really realises its full potential either if only one of them is excited about what they do. So, you know, number one is definitely find a business that you're passionate about. The second one, which I'm a big fan of, is communication. And when I talk about communication, I don't mean about just talking and, you know, let's say kind of um, talking about the weather and things like that. This is about, you know, transparent. It's about authentic communication. It's about honesty and talking about the tough issues. Most couples in business uh, often do not feel safe enough to be able to speak honestly and openly with each other. Um, and so this is where we will get called in as the third party to be able to facilitate that, that level of communication for some of, you know, some of the tough decisions that are, that are happening. Over the years, um, I have been, you know, and William and I have been very, very committed about, you know, understanding who we are. So what a, a very important um, point is, is that each person has got to be committed to knowing their strengths, their weaknesses, um, so that they can actually start to really, and again, this is where alignment um, certainly comes in, is that when you know what you can rely on each other for, and equally, when you know what each other's weaknesses are and you, then you don't make that kind of the, the thing that they've got to focus on. 
you know, most businesses uh, just just hum at that point. So, you know, definitely for, for me to understand what my strengths are and stay with that um, was, the, was the biggest bonus I've ever got in my life. Very good. So we've got find a business that you're both passionate about and communicate. Yes, openly and honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. And I know there's lots of other uh, elements of a successful partnership inside the pages of the book. Where I would like uh, to close with is on, and I called it a tough question earlier, but what it is is another couple of big concepts in the book, um, and they are commitment and integrity. Mm. <laughs> Can you <yeah. laughs> just a lightweight finish to yeah, the interview? Just, just yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about those two? And and I want to hear your point of view on the role that they play in successful relationships. Right. So again, this is the crossover of you know what it is to be in a life relationship, and equally bring some of these principles into a business when you choose to, you know, commit to a relationship personally, um, what we take for granted is, yes, we'll be committed, um, yes, we'll have integrity with each other. And really what I know to be true is that there's there's a whole different level to commitment and integrity. And, you know, the, the easiest way for me to break this down is um, for people to really understand that, Commitment is not about I'll be committed when you do something for me. It's also like I'll have integrity um, to you as long as I know you'll give it back to me. This is what we also talk about in the Invisible Partnership is, you know, you need to personally come to this relationship in business and in your life with 100% commitment to having it be successful. You bring 100% commitment to knowing that you will do everything in your power to make the relationship work. This is not about a 50-50 kind of give or take. And this is one of the absolute confronting things that William and I needed to, to embrace in our relationship. Both of us come from divorced families. So we were working against, you know, our backgrounds and, you know, just our belief systems around what it is to have commitment to each other at all cost, you know, and, and to have integrity with each other, to build a level of trust that, quite frankly, we had no reference point about. So, so for me, it is you can't be successful in business if you don't have both of these in operation and 100% commitment to both of these, you know, uh, words. And most people give lip service to these areas within their, within their relationships. That's the, you know, that, that's the breakdown that I see, um, you know, in my consulting work. And commitment and integrity, again, those listening go, well, well of course you have to have integrity and of course you have to have commitment. Of course. <laughs> but... It is, you know, saying that, of course, you do that. Um, the, you know, again, William and I would have, you know, uh, defended ourselves to the hilt um, if anybody challenged us on our commitment to each other and our integrity to each other, let alone the business. And, you know, what you really, what you've really got to look at is to be perfectly honest with yourself around the results that are showing up in your life and in your business. They are the clues to really understanding, do you have a 100% commitment or do you only have a commitment when things are going well? I'm actually just looking at the website for the Invisible Entrepreneur. I just have it up to the side here. And there's a quote there from you that says, your business is a reflection of who you are in life. Mm, absolutely. And I think that plays into exactly what you just said. So who you are in relationship, I guess that is mirrored in your business as well. Absolutely. And, um, you know, irrespective of whether you are working with your life partner, I mean, if you are, if you're an entrepreneur you're a business owner, um, it's fundamentally who you choose to be on a daily basis is what the world will throw back at you. So, you know, if you live your life from the position of, you know, commitment and, and you know, integrity is around certainly just living your life as, as cleanly as you possibly can. This isn't about 
I don't know, being holier than thou. This is simply going, you know what, this is, this is what you can rely on me for. This is what you can count on me for. Um, and quite frankly, this is what you can't count on me for. And having that level of, of this goes back to communication, this goes back to the freedom of, of being able to, you know, share your thoughts and feelings with your partner is that, um, you know, if you do break your word and you do something that, um, you know, goes against your commitment with each other, then, you know, what we teach our clients is just go and clean it up and, uh, you know, be be willing to go. Hey, this is this is what we signed up for. Let's clean this up and get back on track. Louise, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Susie. And uh, you know, look, we we are very proud of this. Uh, is this book? I mean, as I um, certainly said, is that. Um, you know, going through a divorce is emotionally challenging, let alone financially expensive. Um, business failure is also very confronting and if you know bottom line is if we can make a difference to the you know couples in business in Australia and we can allow them to thrive together and have the most you know successful partnership that they possibly can then you know it's it's worth every you know word that is in that book I've always said for me there's nothing more satisfying than not having to come home and say, honey, how was your day? Because we've lived that day together and created something wonderful. I'm sure the book will save many relationships and many businesses. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Susie. Thank My you. pleasure. The book is The Invisible Partnership, How to Work with Your Spouse Without Getting Divorced. It's available in bookstores now and you can learn more at www.invisiblepartnership. Dot com. There's success tips and interviews and lots of great information at the website. And of course, you can pick up a copy of the book at your favourite bookstore. Thanks so much for joining us. Louise, our very best to you and William for the success of the book. Thank you, Susie. Much appreciated. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Louise Woodbury, co-author of The Invisible Partnership. You can order the book at www.invisiblepartnership.com or at your nearest bookstore. On the Australian Business Women's Network website, you'll also find a video interview with Louise Woodbury under the resources section. And you can hear more interviews with inspiring businesswomen at our iTunes channel. You'll find details on our website. On behalf of the Australian Business Women's Network, I'm Susie Daphnis. Thanks for joining us.